Hello, my name is Buddy Childress, and I am President and Executive Director of Needles Eye Ministries. And I'm Jordan Maroon, future President and Executive Director of Needles Eye Ministries. We're excited to continue to work together in the yes, capacity we that we have been working and the capacity we will be working. And we wanted to share with you some of our enthusiasm about the present and the future of Needles Eye. We're trying to be sensitive, obviously, to the whole COVID uh, uh, pandemic and the issues that are around it. So if you can't tell, we have an acrylic screen between us uh, and it's there for a reason. A moment ago, I said that I am president and executive director of Neil's Eye Ministries, which is true for the next uh, five or six weeks. However, on March the 16th, George Maroon will succeed me as president and executive director of Neil's Eye. And I cannot tell you how excited and thankful I am about that. Uh, obviously, roles will change, and uh, I will be staying here, uh, remaining only in a ministry capacity. I won't have the responsibility for directing or leading the ministry, nor will I have any responsibility for the, any of the administrative pieces of it. Uh, Jordan will become uh, the new leader of the ministry, and I will be doing basically uh, personal ministry. Uh, I will be doing ministry with our Christian presidents groups, spending a lot of time with them and getting Jordan acclimated into that role as well along with the second half, uh, which has bloomed into a group of about 200 men, and they're doing a lot of good stuff around town and, and in the uh, metropolitan community, again, helping Jordan continue. He's been involved with that already, uh, but I'll continue to remain uh, with the second half. Uh, doing some writing, which I have wanted to do for a while, uh, other than the book that I've written, there are other things that I've wanted to do, and, and we'll look forward to doing that. And uh, some fundraising as well. So I'm excited about staying in a full-time capacity. Uh, I'm also excited about having Jordan here as president and executive director. Yeah, we have been excited about the opportunity to keep working together, yeah. but we had a moment, and I know you know the moment I'm talking about, a week or two ago we were spending hours doing some long-term planning, and at the end we were praying, we were thanking right. the Lord, and I just had this really profound sense, and I think you shared it from the Lord that if God wants that plan to come to fruition, it's only going to happen through us working together. And it yep. was such a, a neat time to see our own. We've worked together so much over the last nearly five yeah. years, but to see our gifts and different perspectives and your experience and my maybe youthful naivete about what is possible <laughs> all kind of coalesce in this yeah. really wonderful kind of strategic yeah. planning session. And so I'm just thrilled that we're going to keep working together in this capacity yeah. and um, that I'll keep picking your brain and learning more. And uh, <laughs> hopefully by God's mercy, the, the city will be blessed because of it. Well, I, I, I couldn't concur more, Jordan. I have uh, the last five years have been a real treat. Uh, it, it is for me, it's been exciting to have you here for a number of reasons, not the least of which to see the many gifts that you have and to see how God uses those. Yeah, we ever since the decision was made uh, for me to step into this role, we've been talking about when, when would mm -hmm. that happen and right. when would the handoff happen. And I think you, uh, in a really gracious and empowering way, you didn't want it to take too long. Right. And I wanted to make sure I knew enough of what I was doing <laughs> uh, to steward the ministry well. So we've been kind of thinking March, April for a while, praying right. about it, talking about it. And we just had a conversation and we sort of said, if it had to be March 1, April 1, or March 15, where were we? And you said, April 1 is too late. And I said, March 1 is too early. And we said, all right, Process right in the middle. Right. Uh, so we're excited about that. Yeah, and uh, really are. Yeah, and it's, it's a gift to me for a thousand reasons, but one reason in particular that you'll still be here, which is I don't have to know every single thing day one. Right. But if you and Laura were moving to Kentucky, I might have to. Right. So right. it is a, a, an opportunity for us to move forward with that transition, uh, but continue to yeah. lean on and learn from your experience. And obviously you'll be on the team and with the board and uh, offer strategy and insight. Yeah. So I think that's going to be exciting. It, it will be. Uh, I'm excited about it. And we. we I think we both love working together. We uh, enjoy talking shop, talking theology, yeah. talking ministry, uh, and uh, talking Chiefs and Red Sox and yeah. you know whatnot. Yeah. Um, I remember one of the first things uh, that I remember significantly. Uh, you had been here four months, and Tony Bennett came, mm -hmm. and um, this was the first time that I had seen you or heard you in front of a crowd. And of course, that night, 
in my mind, I, I'm thinking through, once we arrived, I'm thinking through his presentation to the sure. end of the evening. Sure. <clears throat> so when Tom came to, to finish the dinner and to get to the program, you were first on the program. And so I had to slip out of the room. Uh, I was talking to somebody or whatever, but I wasn't in the room. And as I came back and the doors were just barely open, I heard you presenting as a person who was on staff at Needle's Eye, mm -hmm. uh, talking about the night, sort of teeing up the evening. Yeah. And from that moment on, I, it, it just struck me that I knew you were the right person at the time we asked you to come. But that gift of presentation, uh, it, it just stuck in my head. Wow. And uh, I didn't know that. I know. Yeah. I, I just thought of it when uh, when we were asked to you know sort of reminisce a little yeah. bit. And that, I haven't forgotten that. And and mm -hmm. certainly I think our constituency has seen such a, a thing such as the uh, the series on the fruit of the spirit sure. and other things you've done, and they understand that's a gift that God's given you. That's one of the things that comes to mind when I'm reminiscing about our time together. Well, thank you for saying that, yeah. and to everybody else too. But to me, that wow. Um, the thing that most has blessed me about working with you and that I hope to emulate the most and that I've learned from the most has probably been, probably been something that most people don't see, which is the quiet moments when I come into your office, there's a difficult situation in or around the ministry, and I just pick your brain, and the level of compassion, um, thoughtfulness, wisdom that you have already put into that situation and that you're processing through and considering everybody's mm -hmm. outcomes and uh, it's tremendous and I admire it greatly and um, yeah it, it, it has probably been 50 conversations I don't have one and, and of course I wouldn't share anything sensitive but uh, that has been such mm -hmm. a gift to me certainly moving into my new role but even if i wasn't just mm -hmm. to just to witness that part of your character and your wisdom is mm -hmm. amazing and i really admire it well, i appreciate that when you started to say a situation about four months into my employment where we really bonded <laughs> uh, no there there was a situation I, that had not occurred yeah, to yeah, me the, okay <laughs> There was a situation. I don't know how much I can get into with the. Well, you're um, obviously going to, right? I, yeah. Well, <laughs> none of the staff were involved, but there was what we'll call a plumbing disaster yes. in the building. An outside person called. There are actually companies that sort of do commercials on those, so that's all right. Yeah, but instead we took care of it yes. together, and that was actually a, quite a bonding moment. It was. <laughs> One of the highlights for me, I'm going to quickly transition from that, Good, good. Uh, yeah. was uh, the Faith in 40 event. Uh, I had been here almost a year at that time, maybe maybe around there at the Modlin Center, and just being on yeah. stage together. And uh, I, I mean, I loved seeing Laura Carter up front and, yeah. and hearing your presentation, having your family there, but it was really neat for me, for you and I to be up there dialoguing, it was. And, yeah. um, having put some yeah. thought ahead of time, but yeah. also on stage together about yeah. what does it look like to certainly for me to follow your lead, but even a little bit together, yeah. uh, try to reach the marketplace in Jesus' name. And that was just a lot of fun. That, that will fun. always be a, a great memory. Do you remember how that evening ended, at least in our thinking? I remember you called your grandchildren up, but I don't remember right. beyond that. Right. The, the whole evening, but certainly the end of the evening, was that we, we, we prayed. I asked my grandkids mm -hmm. that were there to come up, and we prayed. Because we were teeing the ministry up before the Lord, for the next generation. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And what we're doing here today and what we're going to be doing in five or six weeks and I think in five or six years mm -hmm. and beyond is team up the ministry yeah. for the next generation. And you're, you're a perfect example of that. Well, thank you. Yeah, it, it's neat to think about a ministry that might, I mean, God has blessed this ministry under your leadership yeah, he has blessed it for, for sure. more than four decades. It's faithful. By his mercy, if we're here yeah. three or four more decades, your grandkids, my children, maybe even yeah. my grandkids could be blessed by the faithful ministry. That needed. What, what, that's pretty amazing to think about. It is. And, and I think in part that was in our minds when we ended mm -hmm. that evening. Mm -hmm. Not knowing what would happen tonight sure. or, or, or today or in the next few weeks. but. That the, the few, both of us are from Richmond. We're both yeah. natives, and, and, and if uh, if 
the people who are watching this video didn't know that before now, they do now. And because of that, uh, this transition's been easier, mm -hmm. much easier than it could have been. But the future is more fertile in my mind mm -hmm. because Richmond is a different town. Yeah, We both grew up here and we both love the community. And um, I don't think you can put a value on that. I think that's right. And I also think <clears throat> when I was in college and then when you were in college a few years before. 10 years yeah, apart. Right? Yeah. And, and when we entered our careers, the, the hunger and the questions that people have and the concerns they have, the answer is still the gospel of Jesus Christ. It hasn't changed. I mean, the, the and culture has wildly changed right. since you were in your 30s. It's changed in the last five years. It's changed in the last year. It will continue to change. And yet the truth of the scriptures and yep. the necessity of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior mm. has never changed, won't right. change. Right. And I think the message that we are privileged to take that the marketplace Amen. is as important as it's ever been and it's only going to remain as important because no one's ever going to figure out a solution that's not christ exactly he's always going to be the answer yeah. and and if we can continue to as needles eye has done repeatedly over the years innovate to be relevant yeah. but not change the gospel message right. Uh, I think there's a beautiful opportunity for us to keep blessing future generations in his name and serving them in their work and serving their businesses and their families and all of those things in yeah. the community and the local church, but ultimately to the glory of God. And that, Amen. that's why I'm in this seat and that's why you're in that seat, because that's yeah. what it's all about. Yep. It, it, uh, it, it, what, whatever the topic may be, it, you know, it could be anything from a civility to racism to uh, uh, reconnecting with old relationships mm -hmm. that you've sort of allowed to fray, whatever, the answer in, in a relationship or in a culture, it's made up, that whatever it is, it's made up of people and the answer has to be a heart change. Yeah. I, I, that, that is critical and you and I know that and that's not going to change in the year um, 2041. It, it's, it, people need Christ. And one of the reasons of many that I am really just so thankful to God that you're going to be my successor is that you know that. You, you understand the gospel. You know the power that it has to change lives because it changes hearts. You are committed to Christ, and you have an incredibly high, what I would consider an appropriate, but you, what people would say an incredibly high view of Scripture. You put those two together. I mean, um, there are a lot of other things that can you know, get, can go squirrely mm -hmm. from time to time. Those are the two critical components that Needle's Eyes always based their decision making, their ministry on, and 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 you're 110 percent committed to them, which uh, it just makes me so thankful to God. Well, thank you. Um, the legacy of this ministry is caring about those things exactly the way you talked about, and that's. I wouldn't be here if that's what it wasn't, right. uh, what you hadn't let us in. And so, you know, I'm very indebted to certainly the Lord, but also mm. my parents, uh, the church I grew up in. I mean, many, mm. many people have poured into me mm. throughout my life. But yeah, it, th yeah, that is first and foremost always Amen. And, and can't change. Yeah. Hadn't changed in 2,000 plus years and it shouldn't. Probably not going to now. That's right. Exactly.